Don't touch me, I'm a real live wire, everybody. Welcome to the Football Ramble. Dortmund beat Newcastle again and Man City beat Young Boys again. It's Wednesday, 8th of November. I'm Marcus Speller. I'm Luke Moore. I'm Jim Campbell. And I'm Pete Donaldson. Hello, everybody. It's Mittwoch. Peter. It is midvoc. It's midweek Hello. on the Football Ramble and in the calendar. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you to friend of the Ramble, Nesbit, uh, for sending us today's intro line. Could be Jimmy, could be Rab C. Mm. It's um, Psycho Killer by Talking Heads, David Byrne, that, that line. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's Nesbit's I'm original. A no. um, could be Wisbit with Paul Daniels. Wisbit. Oh, there's a. That's one for the teenager. Ha <laughs> ha, uh-huh, this way, ha uh-huh, ha, that way. Yeah. There you go. Well done, Pete Donaldson. Do you want to some magic? <laughs> you, you are the most Paul Daniels of the people yeah. in this room right now. You're the yeah. most likely to be a in, magician. In yeah. an underpass, going, do you want to take some magic? Both called PD. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, everybody. McGee's still with us. Yeah. I think, I think. <laughs> just, just to say. In, you I can think, say what you like about Paul Daniels because he's dead. Yeah. Oh, good point, actually. That's yeah. true. So I, McGee can't get us. Nah. Right. Yeah, there we are. We're safe from Debbie McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I feel a lot better about this. Good start. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, very strong start to yeah. the pod. Um, I hope it improves. I think you'll like it. Not a lot, but you'll like it, everybody. <laughs> um, let's start with the most um, pressing uh, news. Of course, we had Champions League back last night. Um, mm. Good stuff. A barn burner on Monday night as oh, well. My goodness. I mean, I think there's still some of the embers burning from that barn burner, if you will. Yeah, fire, fire We've the got more yeah. Champions League tonight. It is uh, the biggest competition in Europe. You could even say the world in, in terms of club football. Well, FIFA won't like that because their little crappy Club World little Cup slugs. is coming. Mm. Um, but we, we have to start with the news uh, that Fizz is back. Oh, <laughs> get him as far away as you can. Get him eight time zones away. Yeah. Great. You cannot keep a man down. <laughs> get him in a situation where he does stuff and we wake up and learn about that's it. That's right. That's oh, right. What a start to the day. What a little treat. <laughs> Men failing upwards, men failing <laughs> upwards, men failing upwards, failing upwards again. Yeah, why well, we are everybody. Um, is it is it um, f- <laughs> fair to say he's a great appointment for it? How did you get that piano in here? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my two pianos. How did you get the other one in? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's it's a great appointment for a club who are very famously yeah. Um, yeah. very socially responsible. Yeah, and love um, love all that stuff because Phil's a perfect fit. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he um, is. I think Phil will put his foot in his mouth. Yeah. Hashtag hypocrite. Very quickly. Yeah, all the time. Well, yeah. he, he immediately tried to get them on side. He said that, uh, you know, he's very aware of the club and blah, 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 blah. And he said, this, uh, he said I really like the city. It reminds me of a hometown Manchester. I thought, don't. I thought he's from Bury, yeah. isn't he, anyway? Well, yeah. oh, come on, you can give him Manchester, I think. Oh, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying, is it fair to compare Portland with Bury? Yeah. Or Manchester? Probably not. I haven't been to Portland, so I don't know. No, no. but uh, I look, I, I, I like Manchester, but I, I don't know if it's like Portland. <laughs> well, Certainly not in spirit, mate. Portland has a reputation as being a very, very good city, doesn't it? Mm. Very, very interesting, very sort of arty, a lot going on there. Mm. It doesn't feel like Fizzer will fit in there. Yeah, I know um, what you mean. <laughs> But well, we'll see, won't we? We, well, we? well, we will find out, Jim. I think that's the beauty of it. He has been appointed, uh, of course, Portland Timberwolves manager. <laughs> uh, no, Portland Timbers manager. He's been given a contract until 2026. Um, that is quite far ahead in the future, if you think we're talking about Phil Neville. So, yes. Um, and the Timber fans aren't that happy about it, it no. would appear. No. And despite uh, their unhappiness and whatnot, uh, the club pushed ahead and have got their man. So uh, we shall see. They are concerned. Um, some of the some of the internal staff are. Just, <laughs> sorry, I should say the the the, the uh, internal staff of the club were, were described as being wary. Was the word mm. used? Imagine that the fans hate you. <laughs> the staff yeah. that are already there are wary of you. Yeah, wary's bad. I think if really they dislike bad. you, it's kind of like ah, oh, but you just what is it? You just don't get my vibe, man. Which, if, which, if someone's yeah. wary, they're, they're giving you a chance. They think you're shit. Yeah, but they're being professional about it. Yes. Which which That's the is best it? you can hope. Is it the really good netball one? That. <laughs> is it is it the um the one that's always on telly in the UK? Mm, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst yeah. one. You won't hear him coming. <laughs> if you pardon the expression. Um, uh, but he will tell you about it. So yeah, they are concerned about what they've um heard about the experiences of technical and performance staff when he was at Inter Miami. So we have had plenty of Timbers fans get in touch with us about this. Um, oh, and by the way, everybody, we will get to the Champions League in a minute. Uh, but uh, we we had Max. Um, email or message us rather on Instagram saying in all seriousness as a Timber supporter this news fills me with dread that I have to listen to this softly spoken used napkin for the next 28 months as the team puts forth a tepid version of go on lads football 
I mean, it's yeah. 28 months. Is I wouldn't worry too much about that length. Spare a thought for our man Eric. He was at Inter Absolutely. Miami for a while, though, wasn't he? he, he, he he's done nothing. He's while. done nothing to suggest <laughs> that if his name wasn't Neville, he'd be anywhere near this job. This is very it, true. He, he'd be the only time he'd be in Portland because he went on holiday there by mistake. Yeah, yeah. Marcus, as the sort of resident Phil Neville fan, mm. I would would put this question to you. When will the coward take a job where he can be relegated? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he can't we, get one, Jim. <laughs> yeah. thing, he cannot get one. Well, uh, indeed. I mean, obviously, we... we it's uh, too much peril for the club. Yes, we were the only um, outlet that was suggesting that he should take the Everton job at one point. Mm. And we know that they're the club that just won't go down. Well, if He's there is one table. man... He's got the pool table. He's got the Everton pool table. Let so, him do it. Yeah. That'd be helpful. That, that, is that all they ask for all, in the interview? Right. What, send us a picture of your pool table. Yeah. What's Car- his, what's Carlo, his, Carlo, uh, send us a picture of your games room. <laughs> I like him, the idea of Phil Neville being interviewed for the Everton job, just wheeling a pool table in. And they ask him a question, he just whips the cover off. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. There we are. There you go. Wouldn't even need to refelt it. No. Well, there we are. Well, um, we look forward to seeing what uh, Phil Neville uh, will do. We do, his... but and let, we make this absolutely clear. We do look forward to what he can do yeah. uh, because it'll be absolutely terrible mm. and therefore funny for us. Yes. And there is a rule... Mm. That's been built up over years mm. on this show. Yeah, yeah. That if you aren't we're one of the big clubs, mm. if we're talking about you, it's going to be for the wrong reasons. <laughs> and Luke making that prediction is very. You can't be relegated on that prediction mm. because um, True. No, nobody. Um, I think you might would... find a way. <laughs> <laughs> There's no headlines coming from you oh, no. criticizing we're Portland just, Timbers. We're just a league soccer but side now. The, 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 the other con- yeah, the other context is that the, t- the Timbers are like a. Yeah, as far as the US clubs go, they're a big club, right? Mm. They, 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 yeah, sold, yeah. they sold out their stadium for years and Played years. Played the theme before their songs. Stop this. We're not yeah. interested in this. But I'm just saying, that's, that's why they're annoyed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We know, yeah. No, they're annoyed because Fizz has gone there. That's what they've I mean. Got, they've, they've, got got proper, they've got proper MLS pedigree and some of those clubs don't. There's yeah. a guy with a chainsaw at the side of the pitch, right? Yeah. So, and they're already angry about Phil coming you in. They might I mean, take his leg off. Potentially a cauldron, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> take I mean, his leg the, off. The threat's you. there, isn't it? The yeah. threat is there, everybody. Run right away now, yeah, fucker. I think that uh, we've talked enough about this bollocks, uh, and we need to move on to the Champions League. Borussia went two, Newcastle United. Zero. Pete, you were in Dortmund, of course. You, I was, you, yes. You went there for scouting the Classica. Out, scouting out, and then, doing a bit of work for uh, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you did see the Classica, and then you mm. left just before your team went there. I went um, to the Football Museum. Yeah, you did. There was a little button that said, uh, do you think the ball was over the line in the 66 final? Yeah, and I, I pressed uh, yes. Was there and... a button of doesn't matter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they've won a lot of stuff, haven't they? So, so you're <laughs> excuse... Didn't win that one, though. Didn't win that one. <laughs> you excused last week for not going to Borussia Dortmund. It's not an excuse. Bo- I just went to Borussia Dortmund. Let me. Dortmund. Let me. Your excuse for not going to the game against Bayern Munich mm. was that one of your friends didn't like football. Yeah. So you went to the football museum. <laughs> yeah. Where? I mean, the, to, be, to be honest, I was surprised how few... I mean, there's only so many kebabs and uh, curry first one can eat. No, there's it? not. That's not I true. I see. I completely disagree because the kebabs What did delicious. your friend want to go to Dortmund for if he doesn't like he football? He didn't want to go to Dortmund. I was just limited from my... So you forced <laughs> someone you know... <laughs> <laughs> to go to Dortmund, who doesn't like football, and then took a make them go museum. to the football museum <laughs> instead of well, one I, of the, well, the I ne- biggest I, matches I nearly in got in a fight with a Dortmund fan who re- very much wanted oh. to punch me on the nose. But, Why? Um, Why? Just c- look at him. You, yeah. Look at me. You won't I, no, I need, I need more than that. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he, just, he just, he just, my friend, had, uh, my friend who, who isn't into football, uh, gleefully told um, a, a man who wanted to fight him that that man over there supports Newcastle United, uh, and that man was a big Dortmund fan. Stitch you right and up. He stitched me right up. That's and, not and good I, enough. And, and I tried to remonstrate with him, but I said, "Why don't we come outside and have a chat about this?" Which yeah, that's I not, forget that's yeah, the language yeah, of fighting, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Which that's what I said to kind Pete, of, you're either going to fight him or fuck him. <laughs> yeah. So is this man just was he? Just just wandering around spoiling for a fight did it yeah, sort of yeah, have to be someone much, yeah it had to be someone and uh, yeah someone who that flies in the face because he's enjoying and I caught Arab money uh, was the one that he, he's the one he, he wanted to hit effectively so that, yeah. that, so wow. that must have smashed it because you, you're one of those people who think that all the German fans and all the rest of it are perfect and not, do nothing wrong yeah. Yeah. so now yeah. what do you think do you hate them all now? well I wanted them to lose for, for him but uh-huh. they, they, I think the Dortmund fans covered themselves in, in yeah. a certain amount of glory with their so, protests so they throw what tennis balls and fake gold bars on the yeah. field do you know what I thought that was against Newcastle. Yeah, I thought, I thought, that was yeah. I thought and it was. Yeah, I thought I, it I was, partly was. I think. I mean, well, yeah, the, the so, timing yeah. of it is yeah. perhaps very deliberate, isn't it? Yeah. Although, like with Ian Dark said, it looks like the things that you—they look like the containers you get sausages in. It, it wasn't clear that they were gold bars, was it? I, I think it was as clear if the if the commentator isn't saying stupid stuff. <laughs> like if the, if he's not sort of saying it, it looks like the sort of things that, that you get food in. I mean, mm. it's, I mean, it was kind of obvious that they were gold bars, wasn't it? 
Uh, it wasn't to me. If you didn't have I'm, Glenn Hoddle next to you thick. going, I don't know what it is. So, oh, so look at these gal bars. Um, <laughs> no, think... there was a protest. That, so, so people have said it's a protest against the champion. The UEFA, sorry, changing the Champions League from right. next season yeah. and all that kind of. There was stuff a big well. tifo with Infantino on it as well, which made it clearer. Yeah, right. and, and also if you're going to leverage that Why kind of FIFA, as well. the, the, the banner said you don't care about the sport or you care about his money. If you're going to level that at Newcastle, that's quite an odd thing to do because they don't care about money. They just care about influence and power and soft soft diplomacy. They don't, they don't care about <laughs> because they don't have to worry. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a bit. Odd thing to kind of like saying, well, you don't care about air. It's like, well, it's, yeah. but I do. Oh yeah, the air quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor, uh, yeah, poor example. example. Um, well, but Bruce Dortmund obviously they won the game. They shared a video of Scotty T from uh, Geordie Shaw on Twitter at full time. Lovely is that, little. Is dig. that a big deal? Uh, MT. I mean, MTV in Europe is quite big and always has been right. mm. historically. So maybe um, they well, it's, it's a bit just more a nice little dig. Sure. Just a nice, nice little, little dig. dig. That's what we're saying. Um, uh, Miguel Amaron and Anthony Gordon started on the bench for Newcastle, and they only had 13 first team. Um, outfield players available. If I was Almiron or Gordon, I'd be like, "Come on, yeah." yeah but I mean, you've got to manage their, legs, their minutes. Right? Surely, <laughs> you got to manage their minutes. And they thought <laughs> they do. might might sort of leave it late and, and stretch them at the end. But by the time it got to about eighty minutes, they were already done. It was such a patched up side from Newcastle United with no Champions League experience yeah. at all. It really was. I mean, uh, it's a tricky place shame. to go, as we know. As tricky would be an understatement. It's a very really tough place to go. Obviously, Dortmund and Dortmund. You know, lest we forget, you know, they are a better side than Newcastle. Mm. That's not. Um, Disrespectful to Newcastle at all. You're talking about a side who, who should be German champions well, after they well, muffed it up on the last day. They've, well, got, bringing... they've got Champions League pedigree. They've got a decent side. It's Obviously, they lost Bellingham and so on. Um, and they'd already just beaten Newcastle. Yeah. You know? So When, when, so you, when you're bringing you, on well, Lewis Miley, who's 17, who hasn't grown into his own head, and, and, <laughs> and Dortmund summoning Marco Royce, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, just the, the, the pedigree is, is very different. It was an interesting situation, though, because the 2 0 thing looks like a comprehensive <laughs> win, but. I don't think it was. No, Dortmund, yeah, right, Dortmund yeah. blitzed them on the break to get that second. It was a nice mm. finish from Brandt. And actually, I felt like I, I do agree that Dortmund are a better side overall, but they're kind of similar level. I would say the Premier League's a higher standard. They are a similar league. level. I, I, Two I take quite the narrow point. games, but ultimately they are they they edge it because of the experience, hundred percent of all that sort totally. of stuff. I think it's it's particularly disappointing for Newcastle where they, I say particularly, actually, that's a bit harsh because the first time they're back in there, and and as we said after that PSG four one win, Luke. Whatever happens, they'll that is a um that is a collector's item. It's a souvenir, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a souvenir, yeah, exactly. Although I mean Milan beating PSG kind yes. of it helps Newcastle win it potentially. Yeah. That it, group it, is wide open. It does. And but I think it's disappointing that if, if they'd have just got a point over mm. the two games against Dortmund, mm. you know, and you're right. I think I think Dortmund was fairly good value for both victories, but Newcastle had their chances in both games. You know, Wilson misses a great chance in, in, in the first game and, and Joel Linton's header. Oh yeah, oh, it's, 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 he will do that. Yeah, I, and, and of course I understand if he scores, there's still plenty of the game left. Blah blah blah. But I mean, you'd rather score it <laughs> and course. see then what would happen, you know. <laughs> and so I think it's a shame they still need to go to PSG, um, and they're at home against Milan. Well, it's a massive game that if they are still in it, a chance for qualification. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's still the Europa League as well. If there's still to play for when Milan come to town, then you think, right, lads, you need to get the home uh, atmosphere going as it was when we saw with PSG and so on. And and then it, because it would be a, a, a shame for them if they were to go out of Europe completely. It would be funny. It would be one in the eye for the owners. Ha ha ha! But for Newcastle, so isn't it, isn't it the case that I haven't done the, done the sums? But they, they play Paris Saint Germain next, as you said. Yeah, they're away. They need to get something because if they if Paris, if Paris Germain yeah. Saint Germain win it, they'll yeah. be on nine points. Yeah. Dortmund are already on seven points. Yeah, yeah. And then that means that the head to head will come into play against Dortmund, which they'll be mm. behind on so I think it is a really important thing for them to go to Paris and get something mm-hmm. and also if you look as a, as a more broad general rule what do you need to qualify from the group in the Champions League generally at least nine points there was a team the season before last that got through on, with seven yeah you can but, squirm it with seven maybe I think it was eight. Liverpool's group because they won every single game so it yeah. left it a little bit more open but generally the nine or ten points in which case um, really Newcastle need to win both their last games yeah I, yeah. I mean the, the, uh, four points depending on what they, they really want Dortmund to win both their Remaining games now, yeah, um, which 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 would help them. But Milan beating PSG does help them a bit. Lovely for Olivier Giroud to score. Yeah, he's just a header, obviously timeless, isn't he? Like mm. a fine wine and a fine man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can I just quickly have a have a word for Tino Livramento? Yes, he was what, what, absolutely he's been fantastic. At such a high level, and, and he looked so much better when um, he 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 they they moved over their fullbacks a little bit. I mm. think he was so good, and he, he started. Um, nominally on the on the right hand side mm. of the front three, didn't he? But he was absolutely everywhere, mm. and that helps me because I've have become obsessed 
over the years with this idea of, of starting eleven of English right backs. Yeah, and I know that he goes there now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you've you've, you've got go one anywhere. side at least. Yeah, yeah. no, and, but as you say, you know, great. You, you could be utility man, although. Um, perhaps in uh, as the seasons go on, he, he will cement his place at right back. But yeah, I imagine he will age and improve. Yes, <laughs> well, as in Trippier, you know, obviously being in his mm. early thirties and whatnot. But yeah, br- a brilliant player. There's no doubt about that. So all to play for, Peter. Yes, <laughs> with, with a with a, a quite gasless squad, but yeah. they might go. Are you, you going to pop to Paris a few days before the game? <laughs> before <laughs> the game, yeah. <laughs> Check out the boulangeries. Come go, on, go to Happy Happy Bang Bang. Yeah, the indie club, and then come home. It's Happy Happy Ding Dong. Sorry, Happy Happy Bang Bang. Either or, like it, 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 something it, dirty. Because Happy Happy Ding Dong sounds perfect. Yeah, you were there. You were there. You tell was, me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, love you back late. Where you been? Uh, happy Happy Ding Dong. <laughs> no, no further questions. Oh dearie me, at Manchester City. Have qualified for the last sixteen with two games to spare. They, Boring, isn't it? They beat Young Boys three nil. Yeah, um, Harlan scored a brace. He did a Drogba celebration after scoring his penalty because at the Ballon d'Or, Drogba challenged Harland to choose between his celebration and Gary Lineker's for his next yeah. goal. Um, anything to say on that, Jim? Um, it was it was just pretty like an AI game, wasn't it? Right. This is exactly what you'd expect from it. There's some, some highlights in it, though. I know we're going to come on to the Harland shirt situation, but for me, the funniest moment of the game was when um, Jack Grealish teed up Rico Lewis really, really early on. Lewis missed it. And the look on Grealish's face, <laughs> given, especially given how young uh, Lewis is, it was, his face just seemed to sort of say, do you understand how many assists I have to get in a game now? Yeah. <laughs> like, you have to put that yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt sorry for a little... Uh... Rico Lewis, it'll be nice for him to score, but there we are. I'm sure he'll get plenty of chances. I think he will. Soon enough. Um, but yes, Ali McCoist was very uh, annoyed that Erling Haaland uh, swapped his shirts with young boys captain Mohamed Kamara at half time. He called it embarrassing. Well, mm. Haaland said, didn't he? He said, You can't do this. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, it was picked up on the mic. You oh, just right. so it wasn't this. just McCoy. I mean, so you did it anyway. It is a bit weird. It is weird. <clears throat> How well do you, are they just going to be doing pre matches? <laughs> there's players, lots of stories. Do do that. There's lots of stories of players yeah. in, in Messi's pomp, and probably still now, mm. moving towards him in injury time and getting to be yeah. closest to him so they can get a shirt from him after the game and stuff. I think this half time thing. The play, a lot of players do swap, do change their shirt at half time. Yeah, right. Obviously. So I guess it just becomes an opportunity to be to be taken, but it doesn't really give the best impression. No, I, I mean, do it we, in the tunnel if you, you know. Yeah, yeah. and we and we're um, absolutely do it behind behind closed doors. We we were um, we we're very fortunate to do this job and you know, get to watch football and talk about it for a living. That said, it's really hard to get up for this one last night. There's absolutely zero chance that young boys are going to get anything at all out of it. And um, when and the, the great example that typified it for me was the when when Man City win the penalty, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, the turn is just so much better than it was like the young boys defender was like, well, what do you want me to do with that? Yeah, yeah. Mm. there's nothing I can do. It was like me playing Sunday League, saying he's too fast for me. Well, at, le- at least we were given two very good goals though. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I mean Foden. Foden's was a beauty. Oh, his feet are like paintbrushes. Something. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> he's just he's, the way he caresses a football is just <clears throat> magic. It's glorious, isn't it? And. It's slightly off balance, and he's always going away, yeah. falling away from from having the ball in his left foot, and yet he still it's manages. Because he's got the best posture in the world, do you think? So he does yeah, have he's a good he's, posture, yeah. he's never Great really balance. off balance. balance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the young boys fans are amazing. Again, when I FC think Swiss fans are, it's, yeah. I'm so fascinated by this. When FC Zurich came to the Emirates last season, it was it was insane. It was ridiculous. Oh, you remember yeah. Basel? Like, Craven Cottage. Craven Cottage. They're that incredible. Time, yeah. There was a man with his top off, Peter. If you remember him? Yes, I do. With the Loud best speaker. physique, I think we've all we've all. It's a physique you did. Didn't see in football back then. I don't think not with in football the fans. <laughs> <In the laughs> Still crowd. don't see it with football no. fans. No, it's, well in this country, um, bar- ourselves I, included. I, I always remember that Basel set of fans. They were amazing. Yeah, and it's odd, isn't it? Because the stereotype of, of Swiss people is they chilled out. They're chilled out. They're little eating the chocolate. They're driving Porsches. Little knives. They're not getting involved. Yeah. <laughs> Say the little knives. I, I'm getting what's to the, the knives. What's the little knives. Swiss, Swiss Army knife. Oh, oh, and... Nice. Okay. Yeah. T- don't tell me you're a man who hasn't got a Swiss Army knife, Pete. You're just the most Swiss Army knife bloke ever. I've got the room to have loads loads of big knives. <laughs> chilling, absolutely chilling. chilling. That's what's in the boot of your car. Yeah, yeah. that's in the Jag. Bought a nail gun last week. <laughs> yeah. It's just knives floating around in water. Yeah, um, it's very strange. He bought a nail gun last week, Marcus. Did you hear that? No. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no. I just the nail gun murder of South End. The less I know, the better. Because when mm. I'm called up, it's just <laughs> yeah. It's just, I'd rather plausible than my ability. I'd rather be out of there as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, John Stones went off injured. Pep said after the game he expects him to be injured for a while, which is a shame for Manchester. Calvin City. Phillips oh. did, a, did a lap of the pitch. Did he hear that? <laughs> He's not even a midfield player. I'll play centre half if you want. Yeah, yeah. I, I will but that's that. the thing, isn't it? It's almost like you know. 
Are you John, still here? Oh, it's not January, is it? John Stones plays in midfield for Man City and, and they spent quite a lot of money on a really, really well-respected international midfield player mm. who cannot get a look in because mm. Guardiola is mad. Yeah, but that's, that's Pep, Pep doesn't care about the money, does he? Of course he, he doesn't. No, no, no. no. Um, and, uh, He'll just say whatever it costs to get him, get him, yeah. and we'll work it out. Well, that's yeah. that. I mean, he's not going to give a shit about that. Of course not. No. Yeah, exactly. It'd be dreadful to buy Christmas presents for Pep. Oh, God, we've, yeah. got, we've all chipped in for you. No, he does it. He uses it as a as a... As a, as a, as a, yeah, as a flipping no, tray if, or but something. If you got him a Rubik's cube, no, so you, you, so you got him a flat screen TV. He eats his dinner off it. You know? yeah, no, yeah, exactly. But if you got him a Rubik's cube, say you're in, say you are spending Christmas with the Guardiola family, yeah. and you want to go, there, you got to buy a present for each stocking garden, filler. Right? They've already got everything they need. Right. See, I'll get a Rubik's cube because Guardiola looks like the kind He'll of guy be at it all. So, exactly. Yeah. You would not. He would not say a word yeah. to his family for the next week. Yeah. No, you, you, what you do is you put little stickers of players' names on it. And he's trying to get it into Information. different formations. Yeah. You keep him busy for weeks. But he'd yeah. be right in your ear over like Christmas dinner mm. going, it's the different shapes and the colours. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's, but we've, uh, we've, we're, we are merry. We are so, so merry. <laughs> we've, we've bought you a new flipping yeah. Porsche or something. Do you, do you want, oh, he just sits in it doing the Rubik's Cube. Yeah. I, I think I, I'm pre-Christmas trying to work out what telly to watch, Radio Times, TV Times kind of vibe. He'd be, mm. be trying to... I'll oh, circle in everything. Circle everything. Yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. It would be, it'd in be very interesting. He'd record all the programmes, then put them on the order he wanted them in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, I want to talk about um, another Pep. Um, Pepe, if you will. Uh, mm. for, for Porto last night, he scored a goal against Royal Antwerp, making him the oldest goal scorer in Champions League history. Yes. That's incredible. <laughs> that, that's the, the man will just not stop. That's the great thing about a player like him from his point of view. So he, he'll be like, I've looked after myself so well, yeah. right, I can still play at this level at the age of 40. And then what tends to happen is, if you can get yourself to that position, just by being around, you break all these different records. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he scores a goal. Was it from a set piece? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's different gravy. But, but he's, he, every time he scores now, he's going to break that record. Yeah. Yeah, no one's who, who else is going to come in? Who's older than him in the Champions League as an outfield player? There is no one. True, but it's not a given that he's going to score for Porto in the Champions League. Against Royal Ant- Antwerp? Well, he's against one of the poorer teams. In the, yeah, but he is a centre-half. Definitely. Last yeah. I checked. Still. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the things players have to do when they get to that age to be able to keep playing is pretty spectacular. Tiago Silva did an interview a little while ago where he talks about, um, essentially, when he comes home from training, he spends, like, I think it was two or three hours in... in, in is, it an, is it an anbaric chamber? I forget right. the... I forget yeah. the um, so, so, the, so like a low oxygen chamber or is it kind of high oxygen chamber I don't imagine it's a low oxygen one yeah, mate. just yeah. three hours in that well, yeah. people do, <laughs> people do that oxygen, and Barrett chamber, might be something from his dark materials this is how much I understand the science <laughs> yeah. but um, it's some chamber. sort of chamber he spent time in like secrets. a chamber of secrets in a chamber of call secrets call it a dungeon if you want to <laughs> alright Tiago Silva and you can quote me on this comes home after training and he spends three hours in a dungeon of secrets and that's how he stays managed at 39 years old. And he sh- stabs himself with a basilisk fang. Yeah. And yeah. that's more Harry Potter stuff, Mark. Did you want to that? No idea. No, okay. But no, again, okay. again, that sort of commitment to do that every single day mm. to like just, just, yeah. just your downtime to still mm. be recovery time and yeah. stuff that you're doing to keep how yourself How long were you tech incredible. correspondent for the uh, writers? <laughs> 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 but it's glorious. It's absolutely glorious stuff. Um, uh, so well done to him and to Porto. Also, Atletico eased past ten man Celtic last night with a six nil victory. <laughs> Is that a an easing? A, so- a soft sending off, though. Peter. It was a soft sending off. I thought. I mm. thought it was. Uh, I, I. I mean, I don't think the um, the, the, the finish result would have been affected because they were absolutely great. Griezmann's having a lovely time, but oh, yeah. um, I think uh, I think it was a bit of a soft sending off. Personally, yeah, I'd like it, to talk about that for three weeks, it, please. It was. That's the thing, isn't it? That was a really. I mean. When the, when the VAR went through it and paused it on the boot on his shin, it looks bad because it mm. always does. And so, yeah, he gets sent off and it's probably a soft one. In the Champions League, there's quite a few sendings off in the Champions League last night. It doesn't mm. seem to have the same kind of... Um, Im- that's, that, Impact, shows, yeah. that shows you how big the Premier League is in comparison. You know, the Champions League, do, do as many people in the UK watch it? Probably not. Um, almost definitely not. And therefore, it doesn't have this kind of... Um, this maelstrom of kind of discussion around different decisions and stuff because that I thought that was a little bit a little bit soft mm. and then of course you know they just get absolutely battered I mean, it's like it was it was training ground stuff oh but the and, goals are really all really fun yeah, but at and spectacular. One, yeah like 4-0 that's how you do it yeah 4-0 this player is just, just for the sake of it trying over the kick it's quite odd yeah, seeing yeah. a Simeone Atletico Madrid yeah. side scoring six and kind of enjoying oh he's probably themselves. fuming he's probably yeah. fuming did you think after sending off they went come on can we have the can You've we have the night off? So many goals there. <laughs> yeah. We only needed one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it was f- five games worth of goals. You've How do you pick there? yourself up after that as a footballer? Especially, I, I mean, Nigel Oxide's banned now. So what do you do? <laughs> Dungeon of Secrets, probably. Dungeon of Secrets. It felt like Mufti Day. Celtic had one shot, I think. 
Yeah, mm. there we Tough are. For them. But then, as we've seen, they've beat Barcelona with one shot. Mm. Um, <laughs> if we can segue from Atletico Madrid to Diego Costa, I'd like to bring a story uh, before we go to a break that um, that, 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 that was uh, handed to me before we came in. Uh, Diego Costa uh, went toe-to-toe with Gary Medell recently in Brazilian football. This is what we want, isn't mm. it? Mm. And then Gary... So I, it's just, Marvel, isn't it? It's Marvel. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's, 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 it's quite incredible. Diego Costa obviously came off the bench. That's what he does these days. Medell was playing... Um, at centre half, so they were up against each other, and obviously they clashed. And I thought Medell, he 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 played the shit house card very very well. We throw a car at him. <laughs> well, because you would think right, they're just going to headbutt until one of them falls over, or they both do, or they're just going to bump chests like old men used to apparently do in the nineteen fifties, and all that kind of stuff. But Medell, when they got close, he waved uh, as if in front of his nose, as if oh, Diego Costa's got smelly breath. Yeah, oh. and that is like—is that a low blow? And, and yeah, Costa's immediately reacted to this as yeah. well, which is brilliant. Um, and this happened within two minutes of him coming on. It's glorious. <laughs> both got booked. I don't know how they both stayed on the pitch. Maybe the ref said, "Look, I've given you both a booking. Just if you're going uh, to do it, do it." Be the ref's back. probably thinking, oh, "I want to see where this goes. <laughs> I'll book them." <laughs> yeah, if you're going to drink coffee all day, you're best going to. Pay the price, isn't it? Diego Costa picked up um, 32 cards playing in England. <laughs> He's on the air for like three years. <laughs> None of them well wishing cards. <laughs> uh, yeah. None of them goodbye cards. 31 yellow cards and uh, one red card. Glorious. Yeah. Let's go for a quick break. We 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 won fight. We. No, can I finish speaking? Are, are you going to interrupt? Can I finish speaking? Okay, because I don't interrupt your question. Okay, so don't interrupt mine. Show some fucking respect. So, sorry for the language. The in in the sorry. What was the question? Ask me the question again, please. Thank you. <laughs> because he, he says he says Paul don't interrupt. manager <laughs> Phil Neville there. Don't interrupt my question. Yeah. Why is he doing he's questions? Answer, yeah, he's confused. Yeah, he's, he's confused. confused. Very confused. Yeah. Well, of course, his former side, Manchester United are in action tonight <laughs> against uh, FC Copenhagen. Manchester United go into this game third in the group, which is good enough for the Europa League. A competition. See you in the Europa, baby! <laughs> <laughs> competition, of course, they won not that long ago, mm. uh, Jim. They're one point behind Galatasaray, they're six points behind Harry Kane's Bayern Munich. Oh, they need it, Luke Moore. They yeah, need this. It's exciting. <laughs> because I would not be excited by this game in most yeah. circumstances. They've done it. So, Manchester United have done us a solid here because you said about Manchester City and young boys how it's just going to like yeah whatever. Yeah. And obviously a number of years ago, and it is really quite a number of years yeah. ago now. Manchester United used to go in a game against FC Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah so what? Well, yeah, but, but you, so what? But they've done us neutrals a favour. What's happening with them at the moment? Yeah. You end up going down a Google hole. You look at the Copenhagen. You realise that two months ago FC Copenhagen uh, won a game nine 0 at home, yeah. and you start to get your hopes up. This <laughs> could be fucking brilliant. Yeah, you start to dream. Don't yeah, you? Yeah. There's a bit of spice about it as well because the Copenhagen manager said that the atmosphere is going to be 100% um, Good. more oh. intense than it was at Old Trafford. And Christian Eriksen has sort of shrugged that off and gone, Yeah, we're, we're not so sure about that. Like, oh, bit needle. Uh, bit needle in the sure, be sure there's a little bit of a Danish banter in that. Though. There could be some Danish, Danish banter. banter. I don't understand. I don't really know the, the boundaries of that. But could could be a group set. It could be. It could a be. And, and, and I think, I think um, you know. Credit to Pete because he said that Maynard would shit house their way to a win against Fulham at the weekend, and they yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, and that was that was the second language? time in a row they've won. That's right. In the last minute, against they Fulham. always beat yeah. Fulham. Gut, they bed sheets were out though, weren't they? They were. The bed yeah, sheets they... have come out. Nice. Bed sheets are out. Um, a pa- part of me expects like. Like Jesse Lingard to pop up for Copenhagen tonight and score. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what he's doing. Are, are the fans going to be taking bedsheets, check luggage, or hand luggage to to Copenhagen? Yeah. Do you think? Would you pick them up while you're there? Use the hotel is, one. Is... You, lose, you lose the deposit. You lose your deposit. Yeah. yeah. You, you lose the Airbnb deposit. Do you get to, with hotels? Do you get like deposits anymore? Do they just tell you off if you credit card for credit card for? I remember I flooded a hotel room uh, in Gordon, Manchester yeah. once, Why? and uh, and the man rang me up, and I thought I'm going to have to pay a thousand pounds here. He just went, "Don't do it again." I was like, "I'm not going to do it again." <laughs> I've already done I it, do it again. Yeah, you do seem like the type that would do it again. Yeah. I did it once, it was rubbish, didn't enjoy yeah. it. I'm not going to do it again. I'm a wet bandit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why did you flood it? Was you just angry with uh, it? I was trying to steam a linen suit <laughs> and went on the roof for a drink. F- flooded it with steam. Flooded it. Uh, no, it, it's. It, I mean, to be fair, it was the sink's problem. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, have you not ever that before, Jim? If you're trying yeah, to yeah, steam a suit, yeah. you're halfway through and you think, I, just, I need a, Go for I need a drink. This I need is a drink boring. with a view. Yeah. That's what I need. Maybe I'll just jump off the balcony. Do you know what annoys about these types of stories? Is that he's the likeable one. 
I get all the shit <laughs> online. I've not had by, so much shit this week because Gary never retweeted one of my fucking tweets. Well, why, and why I is, never do that. Why is anybody going to give him shit for that unless they're a hotel manager? Yeah. It's just irresponsible, isn't it? It's not irresponsible. Yeah. Like, I, oh, I say, let me give you a scenario. There's a baby in the room downstairs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no and they're having a bath. Oh, you, good, more water. <laughs> and it's warm. And it's warm. <laughs> Linen fresh. You They've see. got bills, you know, as well. Exactly. Hotel. You shouldn't be doing oh, that. Boo hoo. Manchester, a... a Manchester hotel. Boo hoo. Oh, you don't like Manchester now, do you? Yeah. I haven't said no, that. No, I don't actually. I haven't said that. <laughs> you know, Jaden Sanchez probably doing that right now. Yeah. He's <laughs> got nothing else on. <laughs> In yeah. Manchester, because he's probably presumably not travelling. Oh, that's a shame. Mm. That is a shame. Um, Marcus Rashford asked a Manchester United fan channel on Twitter to stop spreading malicious rumours about his future at the club. Mm. Stern words from our Marcus. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, it, Smacks of a stressed out group, doesn't it? Across yeah. the board. Yeah. yeah. It like, does. From fans to Ten Hag. They're to... in a position where every game looks tough. Yeah. And every game, as a viewer, you watch it, and it may well be after 10 minutes, you go, oh, okay, they'll be all right here. Mm. But if, if it goes badly in the first five or 10 minutes, you think they're just in for a, they're just in for a tough the, evening. The wins just aren't, the, the feeling you get from winning a football match just isn't there for them. You know, yeah. it's, you, you're either expected to win or you're getting hounded for well, the next week. That's sort of the curse of being such a big club, though, mm. isn't it? Yeah, well, it enjoy is. your noodle uh, deal, noodle heads. But I mean, everything is everything is scrutinised, of course, at Manchester United. Um, it was interesting with the whole Marcus Rashford thing, though, and Eric Ten Hag. You know, the injury meant he didn't play uh, against Fulham at the weekend, of course. But um, he hasn't played since he was told off by Ten Hag for going on a night out to celebrate his birthday after Manchester United's lost to Manchester City. And what with all the Jadon Sancho stuff as well, this is just another one of those stories. By the way, Jadon Sancho has been reportedly removed from the Manchester United WhatsApp group. Who's done yeah. that? I mean, if that is true... Well, who's the admin? It, well, this yeah. is my question on that. Well. It's either the captain or is Ten Hag in it? It, de- it depends what mm. kind of WhatsApp group it is, though, because some WhatsApp groups, everyone's Don't an have admin. captains. Everyone's an admin. Right, you can, you can you can you can just re- remove Bruno people. Fernandes the admin, isn't he? Oh, he's probably ten pesos yeah. and removing everyone all the time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I d- I just uh, it's so so silly this stuff, isn't it? I mean, perhaps it was never supposed to be leaked or 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 whatever. And that's a problem they've had there, isn't it? But it's, at this point, it it does feel like public shaming at this point, doesn't well, it? The slow leak of these stories, yeah, and it's awful. And it and and often this is the case. I understand, you know, certain media and whatnot want to. To, to create stories and they want to create content, blah de blah de blah. So let's not be naive here. But this sometimes does happen when a group of players, or certainly a section of, uh, of the group of players, are fed up with the manager and they want and, and they they're not happy with what he's doing and they they want him out or they want him to change his ways or so on and so forth. Now that perhaps is reading into this too much, but again, you start seeing these stories coming out and Ten Hag, the figure he's cutting and blah 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 blah. I don't know. It's it's difficult, but I I I I think sacking would be pretty crazy right now. I think they would have to really go um, another couple of months on this pretty poor run. But I, what do you reckon, Luke? I think it's interesting that you know, the the whole thing seems to stem from um, a, a, what looks like to me the idea that you know Anthony is a, is Ten Hag's man, right? So Ten Hag goes to the main United top brass or whatever and says, "Go and get me Anthony. He's mm-hmm. my guy." They break mm-hmm. the bank. They get him. Sancho isn't his man. Yep. Mm. So Sancho's also who came in before Ten Hag for a load of money is now kind of out on his ear. And it started off looking a bit like, oh, this is how Ten Hag's going to do things. He did this with Cristiano Ronaldo. He's going to stamp his authority down and this is how it's going to work. Yet he doesn't seem to be able to control everything at United, probably because no one can. Mm. Mm. And then you've got the the um, uh, the kind of really, uh, really uncertain at the very top of the club, which wouldn't necessarily affect the, the football inside, I don't think, but it's still part of a wider story. And then... You couple that in with the fact that they're not getting necessary great results and they're off the back of two really poor results. One, because it's a derby. I know Man City are a good team, but it's still, you know, still a derby game. And the manner of that defeat, I would wager, was poor. I mean, mm. you look at a player like Amrabat, who's probably going to have to start yep. tonight. Yep. He got subbed off from memory after playing poorly on a booking. You know, he was nowhere near mm. it, really. Um, then Newcastle, a real change Newcastle side. They lose again heavily at home in a cup that they won last season. It all seems to be going in one kind of direction. And... It's, it's if 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 you if you do lose the manager in this kind of situation, you just think, well, what are you going to do next? Yeah, what, what are you going to do? do? Oh, you get Specs in for a bit. Specs will be there maybe. <clears throat> Specs was binned off before the start of last season. It was. Though. We were talking earlier, weren't we, about how we're at, we're on November the eighth now, and there hasn't been a managerial sacking. Yeah, I think we worked out. Was it five by this point last last yeah, season? Yeah, it does. It does. Could it be the first one? Is Imagine the Arteta that. effect not going to fire anyone because they might be successful in two <laughs> seasons' time or something? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, but what's but what's the expectation for Manchester United though? Because I think at the moment every game looks tough. 
they they Copenhagen are a team are used to winning. They're better than I think they're better than people think. I think when the Champions League draws made, people look at a team like Copenhagen and go, "Okay, that's an easy one," mm-hmm. yeah. but it isn't going to be. As no. I said, Copenhagen. Right, look, at the, look at the first game, Old Trafford. Narrow win for United, one nil. Yeah. Ever, and people think, could this be a platform? Could this be a platform? And obviously, you know, as we said at the time, if you win a game, well, that's to be um, enjoyed. But if, if you win it in that manner, that's to be enjoyed. And of course, against Fulham, you know, an injury time winner, when you know Fulham will be very disappointed not to have gotten something out of the game. I, I think this idea that, oh, that's a platform, that's a platform. You're mm. desperately trying to find a platform. I don't think squirming a victory at Craven Cottage is a, is going to be that platform. What I think the FC Copenhagen win at home was going to be, of course you'd rather win those games than not. And you can test as you know, attest to the, maybe the character of the side, you know, and uh, and whatnot that could be a bit generous. But if they lose tonight, my goodness, you know, and I think that if they were to go out of the Champions League, then it would heap more pressure on on. Ten of course, Park. it would. But as I said to you before, there's like a, there's like a. I think before, I think it was last week we spoke about the idea that they go to Fulham and they they win that game. But the, the Copenhagen thing's a massive game for them tonight, and they they've got Luton at home next week. Mm. And Luton were really game against Liverpool. I know mm. it was at Kenilworth Road, and I know they didn't end up getting a win, but um, yeah, you know, they just seem like a team. I don't know if I'm reading too much in, into it, but May United haven't drawn a game in the league this season. Mm. Right? Yeah. It's either feast or famine, right? Mm. They've won six. They've you lost five. You've got that feast against they, Fulham. Well, they don't, they don't stick in, is what I mean. Okay. Um, uh, necessarily. I suppose maybe I'm talking shit because they won last, late on against Fulham. Yeah. For the they had like a feast row. ice cream, but for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, do you want to come in on that? Uh, <laughs> Viennetta. Because your ears pricked up even Viennetta under your head. Yeah. <laughs> we all do like a feast, though. The Viennetta <laughs> used to be like a luxury item, didn't it? Well, that's and how they market it. And then, it, you, yeah. and then you see it being It's like a made, pound now. Just, I know. It is a pound now. I think it was always a pound. Nah. Yeah, no, it was, was it? marketed as a luxury item, and like, mm. and certain people are snobby about it. And but, that's, but that's when yeah. we didn't really know what luxury items were. Yeah, I, I, mean, I was so. still on the Arctic like roll or a chock ice. You know, yeah. Viennetta yeah, yeah, yeah. was my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, anyway. I mean, it was obviously it was obviously successfully marketed exactly at families like mine because yeah. we used to fucking love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sunday yeah. treat after the roast. It's exactly. great. Exactly. You've you've never had any of these, Jim. I've I love a Viennetta. My mum does a no, Viennetta. Arctic roll I or chock ice. Oh, I see. Right. Um, yeah, I had an Arctic roll and a chock ice. Right, fucking okay. king of Surrey over here coming from my <laughs> work. I was, I was having Arctic roll and chocolate as well before I moved to Surrey, my man. Right. Yeah. I'll have you know. On the bacon round. On the bacon <laughs> round. You, if you wrap the Arctic roll in bacon, that's yeah. what you do at Christmas. Uh. Um, <laughs> don't you err uh, me. Yeah. You, you eat raw uh, sausages, me. mate. Oh, <laughs> careful. Frozen sausages. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's not a lie. Um, yeah. Jim, what, what do you think about the game? Don't fuck Jim. What do you think about the game? <laughs> I think they're going to lose, and it's do, going to do you actually think they're going to lose? I, I think this is going to be a, a tough one, and I think that um, I think actually Copenhagen are going to be all guns blazing, and they're going to have a lovely old time. I really do. Um, before we move on from Manchester United, Jim, we put this story in for you for the running order. Yeah. Former Manchester United player Raphael has admitted that he never liked Carlos Tevez, whom he played with for two years at Old Trafford. And I yeah. think that he admitted that. I've been people asking him this for ages. Yeah, finally. Mm. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, the reason I have, I've never liked Carlos Tevez is I think he's a big sulking baby. <laughs> uh, he throws <laughs> his toys out of the pram at every opportunity. Big baby. I know he's, you know, there's, there's more to it than that, but um, Rafael said he was he was mean to the young players, basically. Didn't mm. he? he was a bit of a bully. That, that kind of checks out with what you think of Carlos Tevez. Oh, I, I, I'm not, I don't think any of us are surprised to hear that, are we? Mm. No, I don't think we are. No, there you go. Why was he so cruel to the um, youth team when he um, he he resembles a little boy and he's got like a little um, and he used to wear like a dummy sometimes, didn't he? Maybe that's yeah. why. Remember. Maybe because he, he so wants he to be, be re- the big dog. He wants to be the youngest <laughs> little boy. Crash. What was the story behind the dummy? <laughs> Is he? He was like a baby or something. Oh right, okay. Surely, okay. but yeah, I just remem- I remember. I remember the because I'm I sometimes get that image mixed up with Wayne Rooney mi- licking a big lolly. Oh, that's brilliant! That's one of the greatest United photos classic. in football history. Though. Yeah, but, but, but it says so much about your internal filing system that those two <laughs> things can be mixed, mixed <laughs> it up. It is. They're two little little boys of little the Premier boy League. Things, yeah, yeah, little boy things, isn't it? True enough. True enough. <laughs> uh, well, um, it will be interesting to see who comes out on top between FC Copenhagen and Manchester United tonight. Um, now, myself and Vish, of course, will be back with a brand new Ramble Reacts tonight. Straight after Copenhagen. Could be delicious, you lucky bastard. Yeah, well, I mean, talking of luck, I mean, you and Vish record an episode of Ramble Reacts on Monday night following that incredible match at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium between Spurs and Chelsea. Of course, you can listen to that episode uh, below this one in, in your podcast app. Um, yeah. I, I say lucky. There was a lot to kind of... Well, it's a bit we... like, you know, your first day at work. Your first day at work, you're a bit mm. like, oh, it's really quiet, it's boring. Yeah. Um, I've got nothing to do. 
and then compare that to every single customer on earth who's come into the shop. And I've got to serve them all. It was it took me ages to yeah. write down everything that happened in that game. It was astonishing, that. and it's still out there for people to listen to. It came out on Monday night. Definitely worth giving it a bash because me and Vish do our very best to get through all the incident. Just because it was a great game to cover, it's mm. worth listening to. One thing we didn't get to, uh, or you didn't get to react to um, that evening, was Ange Postacoglu's comments on VAR, and he said Premier League managers should just manage their football clubs. I have never and never will talk to a referee about the rules of the game. I was taught that you grow up and you respect the officials. We will be talking about Arsenal, Mikel Arteta, in just a moment. Um, but yes, uh, Jimmy was booked in that game, though, wasn't he? He was, <laughs> yes, for doing something not dissimilar to what he just described. Um, <laughs> I yeah. think he's maybe talking about going in to see the officials after. Yeah, I think game. they're different incidents, aren't they? Yeah, I think I think a bit of um, a bit of passion on the touchline, yeah. perhaps. I don't know, but he, he said all, a lot it's more. All very lovely, isn't it? Oh, I, don't, I, don't understand, I don't understand why we can't just live, laugh, laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he also said a lot more. Um, did old Ange, and it was, you know, old Pugmol. Um, Probably couldn't believe their luck when he said that because uh, you know if Howard Webb would have come out and said certain things, he wouldn't have said it like that. Of course, he couldn't. He's saying he's a suck up. No, I'm not saying he's a suck up. I'm saying I th- I think, that I think he's done the referees a solid there. I think it's a curious situation, isn't it? Because people immediately, comp- well, in my time at least, which has been horrific this last week, they <laughs> they people jumped on and compared and said because I, I retweeted saying, look, I think this is a refreshing thing to say, just as, as a standalone thing to say from mm-hmm. a manager at the top level mm-hmm. who's just had two players sent off, albeit fairly. Yep. You know, he, that's the key, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so? but managers. Well, listen, would David Moyes say that? He would come up with some weird excuse as to why it shouldn't have been a red card, whatever. So. Take it in, in isolation. I think it's a really refreshing thing to say, which I retweeted and said, like, I thought this was interesting. I thought it was actually a nice thing for a manager mm-hmm. to do after a game in which, you know, they've just been beaten heavily at home against a rival, right? Because, you know, people, have, emotions run high. For Spurs against Chelsea mm-hmm. is a big game. Um, then people immediately jumped on that and said, oh, yeah, but you can't compare it to Arteta because Arteta's team were on the end of a really difficult situation, which I totally accept, and I, and I, I don't think I, I wasn't trying to compare them, and I don't think people should compare them. Just because one's the manager of Spurs and one's the manager of Arsenal and they're rival clubs, it doesn't. I, I don't think Posta Cogley was saying that in response to what Arteta was saying. Mm-hmm. I think he was just saying, um, I think he's quite a clever bloke, and I think he was probably, if he was saying anything in terms of a subtext, he was saying, is it responsible for a, a host broadcaster? Mm-hmm to be asking me this, trying to goad yeah, me into putting right. my, mm-hmm. more pressure on referees when referees you, yeah. get a lot of shit anyway. Yeah. And he responded to it really well. Um, I think we have to look, and maybe we're partly guilty here because we, we're not a part of that and we, we kind of sit adjacent to it and we don't want to be part of that establishment and we're not rights holders and we never will be. So I do argue that it is different and I think it's part of fair discourse in the type of show we make. But if you are a host broadcaster or the official broadcaster of a Premier League that has a responsibility to its referees and stuff, I don't think it's right that the first question they ask is almost explicitly designed mm-hmm. to pile more pressure yeah, on yeah, refereeing yeah. as part of a wider narrative mm-hmm. in which in which they're having an absolute beast anyway. They're having a nightmare this season. We know that. Mm-hmm. We want to get it better. I don't think the fans jumping on board some mad conspiracy train every single time something goes against them helps either. And fans do have a voice, but broadcasters should have a lot more responsibility on this kind of stuff. And just ask them about the game. The decisions weren't controversial. They're part of the laws of the game. Mm-hmm, the mm. kid was on a book in and he got sent off. The other one was a straight red easily because Romero's got that at his locker and does it all the time. They're open and shut cases. You could maybe ask and say, obviously it made it much harder for you because of the decisions your players made to get sent off. Mm. Frame it that way by all means. Don't come in with all this kind of crap because you're just piling more pressure and making it harder. And then you're going to do the outrage machine on Monday night. Mm-hmm. Or oh, sorry, on, on, on um, Saturday because it was a Monday. Um, asking about why referees are so bad. Well, partly they're so bad because you keep asking these questions. It's a race for for social media um, massively punching through. Isn't massively, it? the whole Sky Sports whole Saturday morning output mm. is expressly designed towards people of an age that don't watch TV, so they can clip it up and put it online. Mm. When you say partly they're so bad because of these questions, though, I mean, Ad, what do you mean by that? Because I think that they're separate so, things, aren't they? So the, what the I mistakes think, keep happening, and yeah, I don't yeah. think that's because of the. So what the, I think it's a good question. Being called out. Yeah, what, what I think, and I'm not, I'm not saying they shouldn't be called out, um, and they should, they should be held accountable, but what I'm talking about is a wider discourse around how referees are spoken about and treated and, and what's expected of them. And I think for the first thick question to be asked after a game, it's almost expressly designed to put more pressure and more scrutiny on them, when in this case it wasn't warranted, mm-hmm. is irresponsible. By all means, off the back of the Arsenal game, it's a huge talking point, 
I, I, I have my opinion on what happened in that game in terms of decisions, and other people have theirs. It's, it's, but it's clearly a controversy. Like, it's fair enough. Talk about it. In this case, there's no controversy. It's, uh, it's, the referee no, didn't do anything wrong. No, there wasn't any controversy. I, I totally agree with you. And there were so many talking points. And, and it was a brilliant game as well. well. And his, and his, um, uh, his uh, tactical response, if you like, I thought was the talking point of the game. Mm. <laughs> if you could find a talking point of the game, of course. Yeah. Um, no. Because, as you say, when red cards are obviously red cards, then... Do you really need to... What did you think of the red card? Yeah, it was a red card. Good. Yeah, so did everybody else. Brilliant. Yeah, and then there's no question about that. Uh, well, exactly. I think also people have missed... Uh, Arsenal fans, I mean, maybe I'm a bit biased, Jim, and you can fight the corner all you like, of course, but <laughs> I've had a lot of Arsenal fans in my grill this week after what I said about the decision. Twitter right? Arsenal fans. Yeah, basically. Cool. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, they're, fun? They're great lads. Yeah, they're great lads. Good lads. <laughs> uh, good lads. Right. Um, and and I think and it's interesting as well. All the Newcastle fans now like me again after the couple of weeks ago when they hated <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. But but um. But we do disagree with their ownership, though, don't we? The, yeah. The yeah. Re- the reason why Ange Postecoglou is popular is because of the type of person he is. He seems yeah. like super honest, quite friendly, avuncular. People mm. like him. It's not a fucking fawning over him because of the, anything other than the fact that he just seems like a good dude. And off the back of Arteta being really angry and actually really kind of, I thought, unhelpful. Yeah. I understand why he did what he did, but I think he did it in quite an unhelpful way. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it, it just sets it against stark contrast well, between them. The thing is, though, is it's, uh, you know, without sort of taking this unnecessarily too, um, um, too much of a lurch on, to one side. You know, nowadays it's like someone is either 100% brilliant or 100% crap. Yeah. And the fact is, yeah. Mikel Arteta has been great as Arsenal manager and what he's done for them uh, as a club, what he's done for that group of players, gave us a, a title race for the majority of last season against Man City, blah, 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 blah. As neutrals, we all enjoyed that. And as an Arsenal fan, Jim, I don't know, don't you enjoyed that? Most of it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so on. But it doesn't mean to say he's um, above criticism. And no, Arsenal, certain Arsenal fans in Twitter and other fans of other clubs, you know, whatever relevant to their situation, Newcastle fans, you know, we've enjoyed what they've done under Eddie Hanson, but we're critical of the ownership. Mm. Okay, it, it, it's not all that. It, therefore, we don't hate Howe and the players. Mm. We don't suddenly hate Arteta and, and so on and so forth. But what Arteta did and, 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 and the, his words and the way he reacted... It was ridiculous, quite mm. frankly. It was very unhelpful. And it was disrespectful and embarrassing, I would suggest. But that doesn't mean to say I think he's an embarrassing individual. I don't think his passion on the touchline should be curbed, if you see what I mean. Maybe if he goes out the technical area quite a lot and so on. Richard That's Keys, a, a bit Richard Keys, that. Richard mm. Keys, yeah, exactly. But with old Ange Postacoglu, it, it, the, the, there is something like that, that phrase, he's a good football man, is often... Re- reserved for people who have done something quite disgraceful oh but he really loves the game and he's given stuff to the game it's like well we're not talking about that we're talking about the scandal actually the phrase he's a good football man should be reserved for somebody like Ange Postacoglu because he is trying to keep it just about football if you see what I mean what happened yeah, on the pitch yeah. and he's saying look the referee's decision final of course he's going to have a moan when he's on the touchline because passions run high but actually I thought what he said was was a bit of voice of reason which was much needed yeah I mean well you know it's it's his opinion on a question he's had put to him after his own game, but I think there is an absolute like deliberate like drawing of parallels between them from certain people. Gary Neville is a great example. He's you know he's quote tweeted that that clip and that said like more, pure class or whatever it was, <laughs> something like that. And it's it's a very deliberate drawing of parallels. Like Neville's kind of got this about him, isn't he? And there's a yeah, sense and, there's, that... and I suppose there's an element that you're not comparing apples with oranges because because of what we said. Like mm. it, what would be an interesting comparison is is if exactly the same or a similar incident that happened to Arsenal. Which could be interpreted a number of ways, happened to Postecoglou. So one of the sendings which off is inevitable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and that will happen at some point, and, and we'll see how and he reacts. See, and yeah. this is what I think is interesting that's being lost amongst it. So obviously, the, the the veracity of what Arteta said is has become the story, and the, actually, it it has replaced the situation that we're getting all these terrible, terrible situation mm. uh, decisions, and you know the standard needs to be raised, and people are saying it's a tough job, it's a tough job, but it's like yeah, like astronaut is a tough job, so the standards have to be really high. Yeah, like the standards just have. To to be high but, but Jim, on a tough but, job but, and then they you know it needs to be scrutinized but on that situation they're talking about there in which case and I agree with all of that that Arteta shouldn't be burning through his goodwill mm. on shit that isn't on the that, fucking yeah. cut and dried thing well, well I mean exactly. like, I, think, I, I agree I think, I think do you have to worry about goodwill with referees who well no but what I'm saying is, is it, they've, but the, the, the issue with Arteta wasn't that specifically the issue of Arteta was he was going big on three things he thinks happened in the build up to a goal 
arguably none of which were actually that controversial. One of them probably was. Yeah, I think the other two were. Well, the foul as well. Ian Wright, you can't Ian Wright, separate. Them. Ian Wright tweeted that the picture, you know, with mm. with with Joel. It's a picture, like... though, isn't it? He was already diving for the well, flipping ball, no, so don't on. dive for the. I mean, also, it's not it's not a come on situation. I mean, these are fifty. I I don't I don't care whether it was it was. I mean, it, if it had gone against us, I don't, I don't really don't mind. But the situation is, they were just three decisions that were a bit fifty fifty, and like, yeah. fine, they they were compounded by the fact they happened in very very short short. Um, uh, it's not the same uh, as a Liverpool Spurs thing. It's just no, not. It's, not. it's, it's just not. not. But, the, but, but, again, the, the, we... but the foul I was going to say is that that photo that, that, that Ian Wright tweeted, well, was that photo available for VAR? I don't think it was yeah. from the replay. Well, I, as we mentioned the other day, I think that they, they had to speed through each decision because yeah, there were the three of them. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and obviously, there's a, I don't know whether they looked at Joe Linton's arm or not, but they probably had to within that as well. So, um, Joe Linton's arm only arrived this morning, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, we found he's got arms now. To put it into perspective, <laughs> if they had been on the end of what Liverpool were on the end of, I wouldn't have been criticised on mm. Arteta. No, but the thing is, Arteta mm. clearly feels aggrieved and he said himself, it's, this is, I think, a cumulative effect of lots of different things that, that have happened over time and they've just got a little bit fed up with it. And yeah, of course, it's really explosive the way that he's, you know, the, the way that he's delivered it. Um, but I, I do think that, you know, it is important that these standards raise and he might not have gone about it in the, in the right way for some people's taste, but that, that, pressure needs to be there and we, you know, Keith Hackett said a lot of inflammatory stuff this week about people getting phone calls talking about taking the pressure down and stuff and mm. personally I quite enjoy that Arteta has turned us heel like especially against you lot we're the bad yeah. guys now I'm enjoying <laughs> it's, that it's well, VAR, VAR taken it was a logical conclu conclusion this was always going to happen yep. this was always just going to erode any kind of authority on the pitch and this is where we are now no, but drama. we're getting some good Oi, oi. But you got some social media hits out of it. You got three points out of it, didn't you, Peter? Certainly did. <laughs> oi, I tell you what, we'll be back it, for some more later on, probably. <laughs> would it be? Would it be funny, Jim? Yeah. If I think if I already I know the answer. To this. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, Luke, Luke. If Arsenal got at the end of yes. a bad one against Sevilla, Pete and tonight. me will say yes to this question. <laughs> Jim will say no. And I'll tell you, wet himself. <laughs> I, I, I just think that's the only way. Ah, wetter. He's got nowhere to go. He's got nowhere to go. Oh, yeah, nowhere to go. Ah, wetter. Yes, yeah. good. Um, well, Arsenal. Um, yeah, uh, the, 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 the Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta was described by the CEO of the Charity Ref Support UK. Um, group, shame that they have to exist. Really, um, a Mercedes version of Neil Warnock doesn't make any yeah. sense. Does it? No, he no. also it does though. You no, know what he means. But he was talking about sort of taking the temperature down, and then he said, "Mikel Arteta's touchline behaviour is the worst in the Premier League, and his behaviour is a large part of the problem in football." Called the statement an infantile moan. So, in time to trying to take the pressure down, he's essentially just acted in the same way. He just sounds like someone who wants to be involved to me. Oh, I, don't, I think it's that's good. Like Mikel Arteta all for it. stood by his rant saying, I, "I have to." Do Defend my club. Well, this man is defending the referees. Yeah, and I'm are. saying he sounds like a knob. I'm saying <laughs> I'm, I like him. Def defend your um, whipped in crosses. <laughs> Yeah, is it, was, it Paul, was it Paul that Jorginho refused to shake Jamal LaSalle's hand? Uh, no, I, I completely think he has every right to them to fuck off. Oh. His mate spent the whole game pushing him over. Like, the gesture isn't automatic, isn't it? You have to behave in a way that merits a handshake afterwards. It yeah. means nothing God, otherwise. Your, your team's <laughs> conduct is going to be microscope. I like that Jim, Jim is like benign, 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 100 miles an hour. Benign, <laughs> benign, benign, benign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's I told right. you we're the bad guys now. We turn yeah. heel. Yeah. We're the very best to be um, in bad guys. Arsenal will play Sevilla tonight, of course. Um, talking of bad guys, did you see Sevilla effectively stole a commercial flight on Saturday? We have to say flight, <laughs> not jet. If they'd have stolen a jet, it would be right. a much bigger story. Say Sevilla, do you mean Sergio Ramos? Maybe. Yeah. Um, this was the, Their charter flight was cancelled. Um, uh, Sevilla's charter fly. So they basically were like, uh, I'm sorry, but we need the jet. Um, and they mm. uh, they said, get lost, you lot, and left 80 passengers stranded. That is wonderfully Imagine. outrageous, isn't it? Imagine, yeah, someone on Twitter Imagine said... if you're a Betis fan on that flight. <laughs> oh, did, Ra did Ramos have like a fake badge and go, FBI, I need the jet? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, what was that? Someone said on social media, we're still at the airport with no word about the theft of the plane by the Sevilla <laughs> football club. I'm the captain now. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible, yeah. So, um... Well, yeah, I, I, mean, I hope I mean, they the, find the, their way home. The sun went for uh, it. Turns out the team's chartered uh, jet had suffered a technical fault, and Air Nostrum uh, chose to put them on a different flight at the expense of everyday people. 
Everyday, everyday people. people. Right, the, 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 normals. the sun know everyday people. Muggles. They appeal yeah, to everyday true, people. Actually, yeah. Muggles. Right, they said muggles. So we can all agree. <laughs> well, we shall see if uh, Sevilla uh, do turn up at uh, the Emirates tonight and mm. if indeed they get some uh, lovely decisions through the use of the video. <laughs> <assistant>. <laughs> honest, I didn't like, want to watch this tonight. I'm going to watch it now. Let's be honest. We're all going to see how, check out how nervous the referee is yeah. Yeah. coming out the tunnel. There we are. I imagine if he sends Arteta off early doors. Do you th- yeah. I think it'd be different in Europe, will it not? Maybe. The next Premier League game would be a bit more interesting. Maybe. Yeah, Arteta will do his rant in Spanish. We That's the only difference. We shall see. Thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble, part of the ACAS Creator Network. I'll be joined by Vish tonight, of course, for reaction to uh, the Champions League. Patreon subscribers, don't go anywhere. Keep listening for Ramble Uncut. If you're not signed up yet to our Patreon, get over to our Patreon by hitting the link in the show notes, of course. Also, follow us on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube and Instagram at Football Ramble. Don't forget to subscribe on your podcast app. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Goodbye. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And thank you, VAR. See you soon. Thanks for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're feeling extra generous, why don't you like this video? Why don't you like this video? Why don't you like this video?